Now, based on the theory portion that we had discussed in the previous class, we'll try to solve this numerical problem. For the subsoil condition shown, draw the total, effective and neutral stress distribution. So you have a sand layer which is 3 plus, 5, 3 plus 2, 5 meter thickness and below which you have a clay layer, 3 meter thickness. So the total thickness of the deposit is 5 plus 3, 8 meters here. The sand has void ratio 0 0.6, degree of saturation S 0.4 or 0, 40 percentage, specific gravity G 2.65. Clay layer has specific gravity of 2.7 and the water content is 45 percentage or 0 0.45. Plus, you need to take care of the water level. The groundwater table is at 3 meter below the ground level. So 3 meter below you have the water level or the groundwater table which means that when you consider the unit weight of sand above this water level it will be the bulk unit weight and when you consider the unit weight below the water level it will be the saturated unit weight. So to start with let's mark A, B, C and D here. A is the topmost ground level, B is the water level, C is the level at which the clay and the sand get separated and D is the bottommost point. The dimensions are already marked in yellow highlights. Uh, let's mark 3 meter as H1, 2 meter as H2, 3 meter again as H3, the depth of clay. Now for a height H1, which is this zone, the soil is partially saturated which means that S is 0 0.4 and below which obviously S will be 1 or 100 percentage because it's below the water table. So in this zone S is equal to 0 0.4. So you need to get the unit weight of soil here in this zone here below the water table and also for the clay layer. So to get the unit weight of the sand above the water table you can make use of this equation gamma equal to G plus SC by 1 plus C into gamma W, the one that we had discussed in the first module based on three-phase system diagram. So G is already given 2.65, S is already given 0 0.4 or 40 percentage, E void ratio is already given 0 0.6 and gamma W, the unit weight, is around 10 kN per meter cube. So you can substitute that and get the unit weight of the sand above the water table. So that turns out to be 18 kN per meter cube. And to get the unit weight of the sand below the water table, which is for the height H2 equals 2 meters, use the same equation. For H2 height, sand is fully saturated with 100% degree of saturation S. So gamma 2, G plus SE by 1 plus E gamma W, the same equation. The difference is that S is equal to 1 instead of 0 0.4. Everything else remains the same. G is the same. E void ratio is the same. Gamma W, unit weight of water is the same. So when you substitute S is equal to 1, the value of gamma 2 is 20.3 kN per meter cube. And that will be saturated because it's below the water table. In short, gamma 1 is a bulk unit weight and gamma 2 is a saturated unit weight. And now to get the unit weight of clay here, you use the same equation. Again, since clay is below the water table, it's fully saturated. So you have S is equal to 1. But you're not given with void ratio E. Instead, you are given with the water content. 0.45. So you can rearrange this equation. This is the same equation that we have used here but since E the voids ratio is not given you can replace SE by WG because we know from the basic relation that S into E is equal to W into G like this right. So G plus SE turns out to be G plus WG and 1 plus E the void ratio can be written as WG by S because SE equal to WG. So in short, 
what you have done is you have rearranged the equation in terms of the values known from the numerical problem. G is known 2.7, W is known 0 0.45, and gamma W is the same thing, 10. So substituting that, using as equal to WG equation, you can substitute and the unit weight that you get is around 17.67 kilo newton per meter cube. So in short, from the basic properties given, you have found out the unit weights of the zone AB, BC and CD to be equal to 18, 20.3, and 17.67 kilo newton per meter cube Now, just like every other example that I used to quote you need to work this on your own and try to see if there's any difference in the values that I've written here because it depends on whether you have taken 10 or 9.8 for unit weight of water now we have gammas and H heights here we'll try to work out the total effective and neutral stresses. So I have written gammas here. Gamma is 18, gamma is 20.3, gamma is 17.67. This gamma is the bulk unit weight, this is a saturated and this is a saturated because it's below the water table. Heights are marked as 3, 2 and 3 already given in the question. So let's take level AA. What is a total stress? Total stress at level AA will be 0 because you don't have any weight above that. So total stress zero what is a neutral stress when you think about the neutral stress think about the height of water table you don't have the water table above it so neutral stress is zero u equal to zero of course sigma minus u is sigma dash is again equal to zero kilopascals second level is a b level b think about the total stress so when you think, think about the top stress, you think about the weight above it. That is gamma 1 H1. So sigma equal to gamma 1 H1 equal to 18 multiplied by 3, 54 kilopascal. U, the pore pressure or the neutral stress at level B will be 0 because the water table just starts at that level. So U is equal to 0. Sigma 54, U 0. So sigma dash is sigma minus u, 54 kilopascals. Now the third level is level C, which is a level at which soil changes from sand to clay. So at level C, what is the total stress? The total stress will be gamma 1 H1 plus gamma 2 H2. Of course, this is saturated. So gamma 1 H1 plus gamma 2 H2. Gamma 1 is 18 multiplied by 3 is H1. Gamma 2 is 20.3 multiplied by 2 is H2. So you get 94.6 kilopascal as a total stress at this level. What is the pore pressure or the neutral stress? The neutral stress, the water table is here. Our target level is here. The height is 2 meters. So gamma w into h2 is equal to 10 multiplied by 2 equal to 20 kilopascal sigma is 94.6 u is 20 so sigma dash equal to sigma minus u equal to 74.6 kilopascal i beg your pardon this is an editing mistake this is sigma so sigma dash is total minus neutral which is 94 minus 20 equal to 74.6 kilopascals. So the effective stresses are marked in yellow highlight here. It was zero at this level, A, 54.54 kilopascal at B and 74.6 kilopascal at C. Now let's take level D, which is the bottommost level. What is the total stress? The total stress at D is gamma 1 H1 plus gamma 2 H2 plus gamma 3 H3. Gamma 1 H1 plus gamma 2 H2 plus gamma 3 H3. Where gamma 1 is 18, gamma 2 is 20.3, gamma 3 is 
and h1 is equal to 3 h2 equal to 2 and h3 equal to 3 again so all you have to do is just substitute these values and total stress turns out to be 147.6 kilopascals neutral stress the neutral stress at level d water table is here which is 2 plus 3 meter so gamma w h2 plus gamma w h3 which is 50 kilopascals so in short total stress is 147.6 neutral stress is 50 kilopascal and effective stress is 147.6 minus 50 97.6 kilopascals again the editing mistake that i had in the previous slide has crept in here as well this is sigma and not sigma dash effective stress sigma dash is equal to total stress sigma minus neutral stress u so anyways the new the effective stress at level d is 97.6 and now you have all the total stresses neutral stresses and effective stresses at levels a b c and d so we'll try to plot that the total stress varies from 0 here to 54 here 94.6 here and 147.6 here so this is a variation of the total stress neutral stress of course starts at the level of the water table which is here and it'll be 0 here gamma w to 0 this will be gamma w into h2 that's 20 this will be gamma w into h2 plus h3 that's 50 so it varies like this linearly and when you subtract this ordinate from this what you get will be the effective stresses 0 at the top a 54 at b 74.6 at c and 97.6 at D. All the yellow highlights which were marked in the slide is marked here. That is a variation of the effective stress. Now we'll take the same example with one difference. For the previous question, if the water table rises to the ground level, what will be the change in effective stress at level D? Earlier it was in between A and C and now it has moved up to the ground level like this so the water table is here here so we are now interested just in level d so we'll go directly to level d what is the total stress total stress will be gamma multiplied by 5 plus gamma multiplied by 3 so the gamma sand multiplied by 5 where the sand is completely saturated as is equal to 1 because it's below the water table so gamma will be 20.3 right so 20.3 multiplied by 5 plus 17.67 the unit weight of clay multiplied by the height of clay 3 17.61 multiplied by 3 so sigma the total stress is around 154.5 kilopascals what is the neutral stress at level d total height is 8 which is total height of the water table so 10 multiplied by 8 10 is a unit weight of water gamma w 8 is the height gamma w into h so 80 kilopascal so you have sigma 154.5 and u 80 kilopascal and subtracting u from sigma you get sigma dash equal to 74.5 kilopascals so that there's clearly a difference in sigma dash which is 97.6 minus 74.5 earlier when the water table was somewhere in between a and b a and c i beg your pardon it was 97.6 and now since the water table is at the ground level it is 74 points 74.5 effective stress decreased by a value 23.1 kilopascals so in short as water table moves the effective stress changes and in this case as the water table has risen up the effective stress has reduced by a value 23.1 kilopascals